Hi, I'm Angela Jin, and I will be presenting adversarial scrutiny of evidentiary statistical software on behalf of my collaborators, Redia Abebe, Moritz Hart, John Miller, Ludwig Schmidt, and Rebecca Wexler. In 2013, Mayor Herskovic, a Hasidic man living in Williamsburg, was convicted of a violent assault. The forensic lab involved in this case used a probabilistic genotyping software, or PGS, to analyze a DNA sample obtained from the victim's sneaker. The software's output concluded that DNA found in the sample likely belonged to Herskovic, and this incriminating evidence played a pivotal role in his conviction. However, countless factors pointed towards his innocence. No other physical evidence linked him to the crime, and alarmingly, the PGS tool used in this case was never tested on a population as genetically insulated as the Hasidic Jews of Williamsburg. In summary, Herskovic's conviction relied heavily on evidentiary statistical software his defense counsel could not scrutinize. Despite these concerns, PGS tools have been used in a total of over 220,000 court cases worldwide, and evidentiary statistical software are not just used for probabilistic genotyping. Tools have been developed and used for many other applications, such as breath testing, environmental audio detection, and tool mark analysis. Given that the US criminal legal system increasingly relies upon potentially invalid conclusions from evidentiary statistical software, we might ask, what mechanisms exist for validating these tools? While defense might use existing mechanisms like source code review or validation studies to scrutinize evidentiary statistical software, each of these mechanisms is limited. And these limitations prevent defense counsel from fully scrutinizing evidentiary statistical software. This undermines the US criminal legal system, which relies on an adversarial system in which the prosecution is tasked with proving guilt and the defense is tasked with disproving the prosecution's case. In theory, the system as a whole seeks legal truth by pitting these two sides against each other in front of a judge or jury. But this system does not work as intended. Many scholars have already pointed out that this system is imbalanced in favor of the prosecution and defense counsel's inability to fully scrutinize evidentiary statistical software worsens this imbalance. To tackle this issue, we ask, how might defense counsel adversarially test evidentiary statistical software? As I mentioned earlier, the US relies on an adversarial defense counsel to disprove the prosecution's case. We call this duty adversarial scrutiny. We see similar notions of adversarialism in the robust machine learning community. Adversarial robustness in ML is the study of how ML models fail under adversarial conditions, such as changing subpopulations or adversarial input perturbations. Our contribution bridges these two notions of adversarialism by introducing robust adversarial testing, a framework for defense testing of evidentiary statistical software. In our paper, we provide this framework through a formal definition and its operationalization for defense use. We think robust adversarial testing is useful because it connects two active communities and creates synergies between them. For instance, it provides new, well-motivated problems for the robust ML community to work on, and in turn, defense counsel can apply findings throughout the life cycle of a case. Additionally, it provides a framework for audits of statistical software while extending the scope of algorithm accountability research to include evidentiary statistical software. However, drawing from discussions with public defenders who informed much of our work, current structural and institutional barriers would prevent us from implementing robust adversarial testing in practice, so we additionally discussed proposals to overcome those challenges. This concludes the presentation. For more details, please see the full presentation in our paper. On behalf of our team, thank you.